Now we come to Surah Al-Hashr. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبح لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم هو الذي أخرج الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب من ديارهم لأول الحشر ما ظننتم أن يخرجوا وظنوا أنهم مانعتهم حصونهم من الله فأتاهم الله من حيث لم يحتصبوا وقذف في قلوبهم الرعب يخربون بيوتهم بأيديهم وأيدي المؤمنين فاعتبروا يا أولي الأبصار صدق الله العظيم This is the third of the group of ten Madani Surahs and you have seen that Surah Al-Hadith started with Sabbaha Lillahi Maafi Samawati Wal-Lard then Surah Al-Mujadila without any mention of Tasbih now this third is again starting but there is a difference. There was Sabbaha Lillahi Maafi Samawati Wal Ard. Here to have more emphasis. Sabbaha Lillahi Maafi Samawati Wa Maafi Al Ard. Everything which is in the heavens and everything which is in the earth glorifies Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Wa Huwa Al Aziz Al Hakim. I have explained these two names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in connection with Surah Al Hadith. Now, in this surah also you shall find that conflict between Hezbollah and Hezbollah Shaitan. But first of all, there is a historical background, and that was the Battle of Bani Nazir. When the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina, I told you, to consolidate his position at Medina, he did three things. Number one, building of the mosque. Number two, making brothers, one of the Ansars, others of, from Muhajib declared as brothers, and thirdly, he concluded treaties with the three Jewish tribes which were there in Medina, around Medina. The Banu Qanqa, Banu Nadir, and Banu Quraysa. That was a treaty of joint defense of Medina. But after the Battle of Badr, Banu Qanqa, they broke their treaty. So they were expelled from Medina. The same thing happened to Banu Nazir. After Uhud, the Battle of Uhud, they also conspired and when their conspiracies came to surface, then the Prophet ﷺ took a step against them and laid a siege around their, you know, they had sort of fortifications. So, but they couldn't dare come out and fight with the Muslims and say so surrendered and they were expelled. It was allowed to them, you can go from Medina wherever you like, and you can take whatever you can take with you. So they took whatever wealth or things that they belonged to them, they took them. Also, they themselves demolished their houses so that to take the doors or the windows or, you know, the some, some board of the ceilings, so these things also they wanted to take. So it's destruction with the, their own hands. So this was the punishment that came to them. But then there was Abdullah ibn Ubay, the chief of the Munafiqeen. He had instigated him that nothing doing, if you are expelled from here, we shall also leave Medina with you. If there is a war against you, a battle against you, we shall help you. But at the time of when this event happened, he couldn't come to the help. So his hypocrisy, you know, it cleared. They are serious, they are sincere neither to the Muslims, nor to the non-Muslims. They are neither to Allah nor to human beings. They are sincere only to their own self and the lower self, the baser self, the aid or libido, and that's all. Huwa al-lazhi akhraja al-lazhina kafaru min ahlil kitab, it is he, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who expelled those who disbelieved from among the people of the book, that is Banu Nazir, min diyarihim, from their homes, the awwal al-hashr, at the first gathering of the people, the first gathering, Muslims came, laid a siege, and then they surrendered. Ma zanantum yakroju. Oh Muslims, you never thought they will come out. Wazannu annahu maniyatum husunuhum. And they also thought that their fortresses would defend them from Allah. Fatahum Allah min hasulam yahtasimu. But then Allah came upon him, whence they reckoned not, they didn't think. From where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can attack them. What was that? 
Allah put in their hearts the terror of Muslims. This is how Allah attacks. Now what thing can avail you? When your hearts have gone and you are full of fear and terror, nothing can help you. فَأَتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ هَيْسُ لَمْ يَحْتَسِبُوا وَقَذَفَ فِي قُلُوبِهِ مِنْ رُعْبَ يُخْرِبُونَ بُيُوتَهُمْ بِعَدِيهِمْ Now they are demolishing and destroying their homes with their own hands. وَأَيْدِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And the rest of the work was done by the Muslims. فَأَتَبِرُوا يَا أُلِي الْأَبْسَارِ So take heed of this, O you who have eyes and sight. وَلَوْلَا أَنْ كَتَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ الْجَلَاءِ And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not prescribed for them the exile, لَعَزَّبَهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاتِ فِي الدُّنْيَا He would have given them a very painful chastisement in this world. وَلَهُمْ فِي الْآخَرَةِ عَزَابُ النَّارِ And for them in the hereafter is the torment of the fire. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ شَاقُ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Now this is the same. حَادَّ يُحَادُّ شَاقَّ يُشَاقُ Those the conflict. مُشَاقَّ بَابَ مُفَعْلَ مُشَاقَّ Enmity. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ شَاقُ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ This is because they were enemies to Allah and His Messenger. وَمَنْ يُشَاقِ اللَّهَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْلِقَابِ And whosoever opposes and fights against Allah so Allah is very severe in punishment. مَا قَتَعْتُمْ مِنْ لِينَةٍ أَوْ تَرَكْتُمُوهَا قَائِمَةً عَلَىٰ أُصُولِهَا Whatsoever palm trees you cut down, because there were palm trees around their fortresses, and it's sort of, you know, a defense for them, the defense line. So the Prophet allowed the Muslims to cut down some of the palm trees, so that the way to invade over their fortresses was to clear. Then there was the criticism, what type of a messenger of Allah he is, he is letting people cutting down the trees. They, they, have, they are innocent. They have done nothing to them. But you know, Allah is saying that it was with the permission of Allah. مَا قَتَعْتُمْ مِنْ لِينَةٍ أَوْ تَرَكْتُمُوهَا قَائِمَةً عَلَىٰ أُصُولِهَا Whatsoever palm trees you cut down or left standing upon their roots, it was by Allah's leave. فَبِيزْنِ اللَّهِ وَلَيُخْزِيَ الْفَاسِقِينَ And this was so that the transgressors should be humiliated. فَمَا أَفَعَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ رَسُولِهِ and whatsoever is restored to his messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَمَا أَوْجَفْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ خَيْرٍ وَلَا رِكَابٍ You made no expedition against them with cavalry or cavalry. Now this was a position that when there was no fighting, whatever wealth the Muslims got, what wa it was ghanimah, if it was ghanimah, it should have been divided among all the people who took part in that expedition. But here is a new law that if there is no fighting, and without fighting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives some wealth to the Muslims from the non-Muslims, then it is called fair. And this fair is not distributed. It is exclusively for Allah and His Messenger and His relatives and the poor among the Muslims. So this is the fair. مَا أَفَعَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ رَسُولِهِ مِنْهُمْ فَمَا عَجَفْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ خَيْلٍ You didn't run your horses over them. وَلَا رِكَابٍ Nor your camels. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يُسَلِّتُمْ عَلَىٰ مَنْ يَشْاءَ نَسْوَنُسُ لَهُ عَلَىٰ مَنْ يَشَاءَ But Allah imposes His messengers on whomsoever He wishes. وَاللَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَعِنْ قَدِيرٍ And definitely Allah is powerful over everything. مَا أَفَعَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ رَسُولِهِ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْقُرَىٰ Whatsoever Allah has restored to His messenger from the people of the township. Now this is the law. فَلِلَّهِ It is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِلْرَسُولِ And His Messenger. وَلِذِ الْقُرْبَى And all those are the kindred or the kinsmen of the Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَلِيَتَامَى And the orphans. وَالْمَسَاكِينَ And the needy. وَبْلِ السَّبِيلِ And the travelers, the wayfarers. كَيْ لَا يَكُونَ دُولَةً بَيْنَ الْأَغْنِيَاءِ مِنْكُمْ So that the wealth should not remain circulating among the rich only of you. Now this is a very big fundamental principle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has defined here. The system of equitable distribution of wealth. Not that the wealth is circulating among the haves, the rich people only. And you know it is not settling down to the lower sections of the society. Allah has devised a plan through which this, this wealth is distributed equitably among all the sections of the society. وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ Whatsoever the messenger gives you, take it, receive it. وَمَا أَنَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ And whatever he forbids, abstain from it. 
وَتَّقُوا اللَّهِ and have fear of Allah إن الله شديد العقاب verily Allah is very severe in punishment لِلْفُقَرَاءِ الْمُحَاجِرِينَ now especially this wealth which has come to you from this Buri Nazir the first thing to be considered as for, for, for this wealth to be given they are لِلْفُقَرَاءِ الْمُحَاجِرِينَ the poor among the immigrants who had come over to Medina from Mecca and they were poor. فُقَرَاءِ الْمُحَاجِرِينَ الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ who were expelled from their homes and possessions يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِزْوَانًا and they are seeking only the bounty of Allah and His, and His pleasure وَيَنْصُرُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ and they are helping Allah and His messenger. They are ready to fight. They took part in, in Badr, they took part in Uhud, and so on and so forth. They are always ready. Uh, they are at the call of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and whenever he calls them, Ula'aika humus sadiqoon, definitely, they are the truthful. So now, the first right of, on this male fe, or this, you know, wealth which has come to the Muslims without fighting, first right is for them. وَالَّذِينَ تَمَوَّهُ دَارَ وَالْإِمَانَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ and those who had their abode in Al-Madina before them, before the immigrants, that is Ansar, and in faith also, who had already accepted Islam before this Hijrah. There were so many people who had accepted Islam, and they had entered the fold of Islam before the coming to Medina of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ They love those who have immigrated to them. وَلَا يَجِدُونَ فِي صُدُورِهِمْ حَاجَةً And they do not find any need in their hearts or jealousy or heart burning in their hearts for that which was given to the immigrants. They said, okay, they are, they are our brothers, they are the immigrants from Medina, they are poor, okay, if nothing is given to us, no harm, let them have it. But you, Saruna Allah, for saying, and they are preferring those, those Muhajireen over themselves. Although, even though might have poverty with them, وَمَنْ يُوْقَ شُحَ نَفْسِهِ Whosoever is saved from the covetousness of their, of their souls, فَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Only they are the prosperers or the successors. وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ And those who will come after them, they will say, رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِيْخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ O our Lord, forgive us. And also our brethren who preceded us in faith, وَلَا تَجَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And don't put in our hearts any rancor or hatred for those who have belief in you. لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَوْفُ الرَّحِيمُ O our Lord, you are verily, very gracious and merciful. أَلَمْ تَرَ لَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ نَافَقُوا Now that was one party of the Hizbu Shaitan, the Adul Kitab, the Kuffar, open. Now the other group, which was helping them, instigating them. Alam tarayna al-lazina nafaku. Didn't you consider the conditions of those hypocrites? Yaquluna li ikhwanihim min al-lazina kafaru. Ikhwanihum al-lazina kafaru min alil kitab. They were saying to those of their brethren, who were unbelievers from among the people of the book, لَإِن نُخْرِجْتُمْ لَنَخْرُجَنَّ مَعَكُمْ If you are expelled, we shall also leave Madina with you. وَلَا نُطِيُوا فِيكُمْ أَحَدًا أَبَدًا And we are not going to believe and we are not going to obey anybody regarding you ever. وَإِنْ قُوتِلْتُمْ لَنَنْسُرَنَّكُمْ And if you are fought, there is battle against you, we shall definitely help you. وَاللَّهُ يَشْهَدُوا إِنَّهُمْ لَكَعَذِبُونَ And Allah testifies that they are liars. لَا يُخْرَجُوا لَا يَخْرَجُونَ مَعَهُمْ If they are expelled, they will, no, they will not go out with them. وَلَاِنْ قُوتَلُوا لَا يَنْصُرُونَكُمْ And if they are fought, they will let, never help them. وَلَاِنْ نَصَرُوهُمْ And if at all they try to help, the يُوَلُّ الْأَدْبَارِ They will soon turn their backs. ثُمَّ لَا يُنْصَرُونَ And then they will not be helped. لَأَنْتُمْ أَشَدُّ رَحْبَةً فِي صُدُورِهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ بِأَنَّهُ الْقَوْمُ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ O believers, certainly you are more dreadful in their hearts than Allah. They fear you more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُ قَوْمُ لَا يَفْقَوْنَ This is because they are a people who don't have the real understanding. لَا يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ جَمِيعًا These people, the Ahl-e-Kitab or these Munafiqoon, both of them, 
دے ول نیور فائٹ یو اگینسٹ یو ٹوگیدر اللہ فی قرآن محسنت ایکسپٹ ان فورٹی فائیو ٹاؤن شپ ویئر دے آر دے دیم سیلز آر سیف قوم ورائے جدر اور فرام بہائنڈ دی والس ناٹ کم فیس ٹو فیس فائٹ مین ٹو مین باسہم بینہو شدید دیئر انمیٹی امنگ دیم اس ویری سیویئر تحسبہم جمیعن یو تھنک دیئر دیئر یونائٹیڈ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ شَتَّا While their hearts are divided. How can they be united? Unity can be among only the sincere people. Whosoever is not sincere, how can they be united? ذَلَكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَوْمٌ قَوْمٌ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ And this is because they are a people who have no sense. كَمَسَلِ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ قَرِيبٌ سَقْزَاقُوا وَبَعَلَ عَمْرَهِمْ They are like those who a short time before were tested and the evil result they had. وَذَاقُوا وَبَالَ عَمْرَهِمْ of their conduct and this is بَرُوْ قَيْنْقَعَ the first tribe which was expelled just after Badr وَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ الْعَلِيمُ for them is a very painful chastisement كَوَسَلِ الشَّيْقَانِ the hypocrites are like Satan is قَالَ الْإِنسَانِ فُرْ he says to man unbelief, don't believe, disbelief فَلَمَّا كَفَرَا When he disbelieves, قَالَ إِنِّي بَرِيُّمْ مِنْكَ He says, I am quit, I am free, I have no connection with you. إِنِّي بَرِيُّمْ مِنْكَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهَ رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ I fear Allah, who is the Lord of all the worlds. فَكَانَ عَاقِبَتَهُمَا So the end of both of them, Satan as well as Munafiqeen as well as the Kuffar. عَاقِبَتَهُمَا أَنَّهُمَا فِي النَّارِ قَالِ دَيْنِ فِيهَا That both of them will be in the fire. And to, to abide there forever, forever. And this is the reward of those who are evildoers. Now the last section of this surah is as important as the first six ayat of Surah Al-Hadid. And here you will find in the last three ayat the biggest collection of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at one place in Quran. Sixteen names at one place in three ayat. Nowhere else you will find such a flower pot, you know, all the flowers put together in a very beautiful manner and sequence. First ayah, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat liqad. O you who believe, have fear of Allah, have regard for Allah. Wal tanzur nafsum, and every soul must see. مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ What it has sent for itself for tomorrow. The tomorrow that is hereafter. The big tomorrow. The big tomorrow which is to come. What have you sent? This should be your first concern. Everybody should always be seeing to it what he has sent for him for the hereafter. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ In the same ayah again, have taqwa of Allah. Keep him in your mind and heart, always. اِتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ خَبِرُ مِمَا تَعَمَلُونَ Verily, Allah is aware of what you are doing. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ أُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ And don't be like those who forgot Allah. And then He made forget them, then made them forget themselves. Those are the transgressors. This ayah, is of a very important philosophical import. And this is the basis of Allama Iqbal's philosophy of self. Forgetting yourself, what does it mean? Who forgets himself? Who forgets his needs, needs of his body, his material needs? Who doesn't care for his body and its needs and requirements? So what you forget is some other existence of yours, existence, which is not visible. Your ruh, your spirit, that is your real self. When I say, my pen, what does it mean? Pen is a different say, another thing, and I am a different person. I own this. There is a connection, relationship of ownership of one thing by the other. When I say my body, who is that I who owns this body? 
my hands, my feet, my head, my this, my that, my eyes, my ears, my body. But who is that I? Who possesses this body? That is the spiritual existence of man. That is the khudi, that is the self. That is the ana. And man just forgets it. He takes himself to be an animal. This is the biggest tragedy of our age, especially due to Darwinian theory of evolution. Now people think we are animals, just, talk, just like other animals. There is no qualitative difference between animals and man. The difference is only quantitative. Just as we have a horse and a donkey, both are animals. Donkey is a coarse animal, horse is a refined animal, that's all. What's the difference? No other difference. The same instincts, the same something to eat, something to drink, the same sexual for procreation, everything. What's the difference? It's only qualitative, quantitative. In the same way, what's the difference between man and chimpanzee and gorilla? No. There's also a quantitative difference, not qualitative difference. So, modern man has just taken himself to be an animal and nothing else. This is the tragedy. And there is, you know, in the Upanishads, Hindu script, scriptures, a very beautiful quotation. Man in his ignorance identifies himself with the material sheaths which encompass his real self. Real self is something within me and around this real self there are the sheaths, material sheaths, the bones and the flesh and then the skin, you know, these are the material sheets. But man in his ignorance, he doesn't know the real self. He thinks, this is me, this is I. The physical body, this is me. Man in ignorance identifies himself with the material sheets which encompass his real self. So this is the ayah. Because it was asked by Nazir Niyazi, Allama Iqbal, when people say, someday people say, you have borrowed your philosophy of the self from such and such persons, from such and such persons. You should say, what is the source of your philosophy of self? He said, okay, come tomorrow at that time and I will dictate to you. So he said, I was very happy, very happy. The poet of the East, he will be dictating to me. So when he, at the appointed time, he went there with a pencil and a notebook, ready to write down, Allah Akbar said, take out that copy of Quran. So I was somewhat disappointed. He has not asked me to take out any book of philosophy, Nietzsche or someone else. But he has said, Quran. Then he said, open Surah Al-Hashim, this ayah. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ Don't be like those who forget Allah. And as a punishment, Allah makes them forget themselves. They have resigned from their high position of being the vice student of Allah on earth. They have taken upon them the position of an animal and nothing else. لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة. The dwellers of the fire and the dwellers of the garden are not equal. أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون. Verily, the dwellers of the garden, they are the triumphants. They will be the successful. لو أنزل الله هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله. Had we sent down this Qur'an on some mountain, you would have seen it humbled and split asunder in the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْسَارُ نَذْرِ بِهَا لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ 
and these are the similitudes for mankind that we strike, so that they should ponder, they should reflect. Now this is the simile. But as you know, in Surah Araf, that incident has been mentioned, which took place when Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam, he requested Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbi Areni Anzur Ilaq. Oh Allah, you have blessed me with this conversation with you. I had before also. Today you have again blessed me with the conversation. One more request, please, grant it. Show yourself to me. I want to look at you. What was the answer? Lantarani. You won't be able to see me. Wala kinunzur ilal jabal. But look to that mountain in front of you. I will throw a light of mine own on that jabal, on that mountain. If it can, bear it and stands at its place. Then you can hope that you can see me. When Allah cast down a shadow you may call, a reflection you may call, a light from His person, whatever we can, can say, Tajalla Rabbuhu Lil Jabal, Jalahu Dakkan, Wakharra Musa Saika. The mountain was broken into pieces, and Musa, although he was seeing that Tajalli of Allah indirectly, it was not directly on him, but he fell down unconscious. So that was the effect of the Tajalli illumination of the person of Allah. And same is the effect of the illumination of the Kalam of Allah, the Word of Allah. This is the Word of Allah. Had it been sent down a piece, one piece, on a mountain, that would have crumbled. Now the last three ayat, as I told you, the biggest flower pot of the names of Allah. Hu Allahu la ilaha illahu. He is Allah. There is no God except Him. Alimul ghaybi wa shahada. The knower of the seen and the unseen. Hu Rahman ur Rahim. He is the compassionate, the merciful. Hu Allahu la ilaha illahu. He is Allah. There is no God but He. Al Malik. He is the sovereign. Al Quddus. The Holy One. As Salam. Free from all shortcomings. Al Mumin. Giver of peace. Al Muhammad, the protector. Al Aziz, the mighty. Al Jabbar, the compeller. Al Mutakabbir, the self magnified one. This Takabbur is something bad for us, but for Allah it is most befitting. Self magnifying. Innani ana Allahu la ilaha illa ana. Fa'budni. Waqimi salat al zikri. Self magnification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you have eight names of Allah in one ayah. And if you add up the ayah before it and uh, after, it will become sixteen. Subhanallah, and you don't find any vow between. No end. All these attributes of Allah present in His personality, in His person, at once, simultaneous. O Allah, He is Allah. Who is the creator? Al-Bari. He is the inventor. Al-Musawwir. He is the fashioner of the forms. Laul Asma'ul Husna. To him belong all the good names. Yusabbihu lahu ma fi samawati wal lav. Now the same. The words with which this surah started. Sabbaha lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi lard. That is past tense. Sabbaha. Yusabbihu. Muzara. And Muzara has in Arabic grammar both present and future. So this glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by everything and every person in the universe, it has been going on always from ever. It is being done at any moment, at every moment, and it will continue forever. يُسَبِّحُ لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَاللَّهُ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ And the same two words, Al-Hakim, Al-Aziz. He is all-powerful, almighty. He has all the authority. There are no checks and balances on his authority. 
Al Hakim, but at the same time, he is the wise. His authority is balanced with his wisdom.